In the last video, we looked at factoring and solving quadratic equations. We saw that factoring was one technique we could use to solve a quadratic equation. All quadratic equations can be written in the form ax squared plus bx plus c is equal to zero. And as we saw in the last video, some can be factored and we could use that technique to find the solutions or the roots of the equation. In that particular video, we looked when the value of a or the coefficient of the term in x squared was one. An example might be x squared minus x minus 12 is equal to zero. We've got the x squared, the x and the no x. So it followed this particular form. We found two numbers that multiplied to give the c term, which is negative 12, and added to give the b term, which is negative 1. We then set up the brackets, so we had the two brackets, and we set this equal to 0. So the two numbers that multiply to give negative 12 and add to give negative 1 would be x, we'd have minus 4, then we'd have x plus 3 equal to 0. So from this, we saw that x was either equal to 4 or x was equal to negative 3. If you haven't seen that video, please do check it out as the basics are in there. So that was factoring a quadratic equation to solve. Sometimes we'll simply be asked to factor an expression. So for example, if the quadratic expression was x squared plus 10x plus 16, this is an expression, it becomes an equation if we have the sign here. So this one is going to factor, we'll have x plus 8 and then x plus 2. Over time you will spot this and you'll start to recognise that it's fairly straightforward to do. So that was when the coefficient of the term in x squared or the value of a was equal to 1. What we're now going to do is look at a way of factoring and solving quadratics when the value of a is not 1. The method that I'm going to use isn't mathematically rigorous, but certainly is quite helpful if you're struggling with a more traditional technique. What I'm going to do now is look at the area of a rectangle. So let's say I've got the dimensions now, 2x plus 3, and then we'll have now, we'll take 2x plus 3, and then we'll take, let's go for x plus 2, and we'll say that the area is going to be equal now to 28 square units. I'm going to come back to this particular example, and we're going to look at a way of finding now the value of x. We saw that we could do it by trial and improvement or trial and error in the last video, but we're really looking for a solid way to do this. So let's look at a quadratic equation in the form ax squared plus bx plus c is equal to zero. So let's take 6x squared plus 7x plus 2 is equal to zero. We want to factor and solve this quadratic equation. So it's in the correct form ax squared plus bx plus c is equal to zero. What I'm going to do is set up brackets, but this time, instead of having x in each bracket, we're going to have 6x. So I'm going to start with 6x in each bracket. I'm now going to multiply the a by the c term. So the first move I'm going to do is a multiplied by c. If I do a multiplied by c, in this case, it will give me 12. I'm now looking for the factors of positive 12 that are going to give me now two numbers that multiply to give positive 12 that add to give 7. So if we look 1 times by 12, we're going to have 2 times by 6, we're going to have 3 times by 4, and we're going to be back on ourselves. What I'm now going to do is simply insert these into the brackets. We can see quite clearly it's the 3 and the 4, and they're both going to be positive. We discussed this in the last video. If this value here is positive, then we're either going to have two negatives or two positives. So what I'm going to do is just insert now plus the 3 and plus the 4. At this stage now, we're just simply going to factor these two right here. So if I look at the first bracket, I've got 6x plus 3. I can take the highest common factor of 3 out. That leaves me 2x plus 1. If I look at this one, the highest common factor of 6x plus 4 is going to give me 2. So that's going to leave me now 3x plus 2, and then we would have the 2. And that's equal to 0. 
I can now simply cancel the three and the two and that is factored. As stated, it's not mathematically as rigorous as alternative methods, but I think it's slightly easier. So what we've got then is 2x plus 1 multiplied by 3x plus 2 is equal to 0. So we saw from the last video that one or both of these have got to be equal to 0. So let's start with this one. If 2x plus 1 is equal to 0, if we subtract 1 and divide by 2, x would be equal to negative 1 half. If 3x plus 2 is equal to 0, x would be equal to negative 2 over 3. And again, we looked at that in the last video. If you like, it's simply this number divided by that one and the signs changed. So it's going to be minus 2 thirds. So that now is factoring and solving a quadratic equation when the coefficient of the term in x squared, or the a term, is not 1. Let's look at another one. Let's go for 2x squared. We'll have minus 11x plus 5 is equal to 0. So we want to solve this equation. If you were just given this as an expression and you wanted to factor it, you could do exactly the same. So in each bracket, I'm going to have 2x. So instead of starting with x, I'm starting with 2x. I do a times by c. So when I say a, ax squared, and then c. So if I multiply a by c, so a by c is going to give me positive 10. If we look at this, if it's positive, either both numbers are going to be positive or both numbers are going to be negative. So what we're looking for now are the two numbers that multiply to give positive 10 and add to give minus 11. 1 times by 10, 2 times by 5. I'm going to choose these two and they're both going to be negative. So in the brackets, I'm going to have now negative 10 and I'm going to have negative 1. At this stage, I can take a common factor of 2 out of the first bracket and that will leave me x minus 5. I can't take a, a common factor out of this one, so I just rewrite it as 2x minus 1. That's going to give me 0 and I can now cancel the 2. If you're unsure, go ahead, multiply it out and you will get this expression back. So 2x squared minus x minus 10x plus 5. You could of course write this the other way around. I appreciate some people prefer to write it as 2x minus 1, x minus 5 is equal to 0. It really doesn't matter. So if you were simply asked to factor that expression, that's what it is. I've turned it into an equation and we can go ahead now and solve. So we can see from here the solutions x would be equal to 1 half or x would be equal to to 5 and that gives me my two solutions. I always go back and check that they work in the original equation but we can see from here this is now factored and solved. Let's try another one. Let's do, we'll go for 8 uh, and we'll do 8p squared. So this time our variable is p and we'll say that that will be equal to 3 and we'll go for minus 2p. So at the moment this is not in the form that we want. We want AP squared plus BP plus C is equal to 0. So adding the 2P and subtracting the 3, 8P squared plus 2P minus the 3 will be equal to 0. So I'm going to do my A multiplied by my C. And we can see from that, if I do A times by C, that's going to give me negative 24. I need two numbers but multiply to give negative 24 and add to give 2. We've seen before if this number is negative then one of these will be negative. So 1 times by 24, 2 times by 12, 3 times by 8, 4 times by 6. We're back on ourselves as soon as we go round and it's these two that I want. I'm going to have negative 4 and positive 6. So in the brackets, this time, we're going to have 8p. I'm going to have now minus the 4. And we're going to have 8p plus the 6. And that's equal to 0. I can see that I can take a factor of 4 out of this one. So I'm going to have 4. And then we're going to have 2p minus 1. I can take a factor of 2 out of this one. 
So I'm going to have 4p plus 3 multiplied by the 2, and that gives me 0. So at this stage now, I can just cancel the former 2. We can see that 2p minus 1 would be equal to 0, which would give now p, and I'll just write the final answer, p would be equal to 1 half, positive 1 half, or 4p plus 3 would be equal to 0, so p would be equal to minus 3 over 4. You can, of course, just solve these. If you wanted, 8p minus 4 is equal to 0, then we'd have now p is going to be equal to 4 over 8, which simplifies to 1 half. The advantage of doing it like this is that if I cancel these two numbers, we could leave this as a factored expression. We could just go ahead and just solve from here if we wanted, but if we were asked to simply factor this now, if this would be our answer. Okay, let's, uh, let's now go back to this one right here. So let's, let's go ahead and, and try and, and solve this one. So what we've got then is the area is 28 units squared. We know that the area is the length times the width. So let's just uh, close this off and then we'll do some workings. So what we can say then is 2x plus 3 multiplied by x plus 2 is equal to 28. If we expand the brackets, we're going to have 2x squared. We're going to have now plus 4x. We're going to have plus 3x. And we're going to have plus 6. And that will be equal to 28. I'm now going to rearrange this quadratic equation into the form ax squared plus bx plus c is equal to 0. So 2x squared, we're going to have now plus 7x, and then we're going to have now minus 22. So that's 6 minus 28. So minus 22, and that's equal to 0. If at this stage we could divide by 2, we would do and go back to our other method. I'm going to see if this factors, which we can see it does. We can see now that we're going to have the a times by the c, and that's going to give me now negative 44. I need two numbers that multiply to give negative 44 and add to give 7. I think that's going to be positive 11 and negative 4. So let's check. That seems to work. And we can go ahead and put these in the brackets. So I'm going to have now 2x plus 11. And then we're going to have now 2x minus 4, and that would be equal to 0. So we could write this now as 2x plus 11, and then we would factor out the 2 from here, so it would become x minus 2, we'd have 2, and that would be 0. So we can see from here now that x would be equal to negative 11 over 2, or x would be equal to 2. All I've done is factored and solved that. What we now need to do for this particular example, as it's an example where we're using lengths, is check that these are both valid solutions. If I think about minus 11 over 2, that's minus 5.5. We can't have minus 5.5 plus 2, as that would be minus 3, uh, 3 and a half. This is a length. So we can say, in the notation we use, it can't be equal to negative 11 over 2, so the answer is 2. If we put that in, 2 plus 2 is 4. If we put it in here, 4 plus 3 is 7. 7 times by 4 gives us 28. So, um, fairly logical, slightly harder than before, but again, we're just looking at a technique. We'll finish with a couple more. We'll look at, uh, let's go for 3x squared plus 7x uh, and then we'll go for, let's make this equal to 6. So we want the right-hand side to be equal to 0. 3x squared plus 7x minus 6 is equal to 0. a times by c. So a times by c is going to give me negative 18. 1 times by 18, 2 times by 9, 3 times by 6, and then we're back on ourselves. So this is negative. One will be negative, one will be positive. Here is our negative, here is our positive. You might just jump straight to these. So what we're going to have then in each bracket is the 3x. So 3x in each bracket, and we set that equal to 0. So I've got plus 9, and then we've got minus 2. I can factor 3 out of that one, which gives me x 
plus three. Can't do anything with this one. It says no common factor. 3x minus 2, and that's equal to 0. So from here, we can see that x plus 3 would be equal to 0, which means x would be negative 3. Or we've got 3x minus 2 is equal to 0, and x would be equal to 2 thirds. So there are the solutions to that equation. We'll finish with 1 now, and often these are called hidden quadratics. 4x will be equal to 3 plus 10 over x. I'm going to multiply both sides of the equation by x. 4x multiplied by x is 4x squared. 3 multiplied by x is 3x. And then we're going to have plus 10. 10 over x multiplied by x is just 10. So let's go ahead and rearrange this one into the form ax squared plus bx plus c is equal to 0. So I simply subtracted 3x on both sides and subtracted 10. A times by C. We're going to have now A times by C is going to give me negative 40. After a while, you'll just spot them. This is going to be negative 8, and then we're going to have plus 5. So, they're my two numbers that give minus 3 or negative 3, and we set up 4x, 4x, and then we simply now insert the values and simplify so we've got minus 8, and then we've got plus 5. Taking the 4 out, we're going to have 2x minus, what's that going, uh, sorry, x minus 2. Let's just put in x minus 2. Don't need on there, 2x. Let's just get rid of that. There we go, x minus 2. And then we're going to be uh, a, not be able to do anything with this, so it's going to be 4x plus 5 is equal to 0. So x will be equal to 2, or x will be equal to negative 5 over 4. So there we go. Factoring and solving quadratic equations when the coefficient of the term in x squared or your value of a is not equal to 1. As stated throughout the video, this is not mathematically rigorous, but I think it's an easier way to access the topic if you're struggling with it. Do make sure you're comfortable with the difference between factoring an expression and factoring a quadratic equation to solve. This is an expression, it becomes an equation where we would solve if we have an equal sign.